Hello Space Cats and welcome back to my channel. We've known about the presence of dark matter since at least the 1930s, but now it's 2020 and it remains that the identity of dark matter is still one of the biggest mysteries of our time. Will 2020 be the year that we uncover who is behind the veil of dark matter? In this week's video, I'll be talking about ground detection versus sky detection of dark matter. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so just to remind you, dark matter is the all-pervasive matter that fills up our universe and makes up just over 85% of all the matter we know of in the universe. I already made a video about the importance of dark matter previously, so if you haven't seen that yet, make sure you check it out, I'll put the link up above. Um, but in short, dark matter is the glue that holds our universe together and it's invisible because it doesn't emit any radiation. In fact, it hardly interacts with anything at all, but without it, all of our galaxies would be ripped apart from the high orbital speeds that the stars have within the galaxies. So it turns out that there are several ways that we can approach detecting dark matter. Myself, as an astronomer, the obvious way is through gravitational lensing. And in fact, that's my forte. In gravitational lensing, the gravitational influence of dark matter on the background galaxies would distort their observed shapes. And this will highlight where the dark matter is in the universe and also the amount of dark matter there is. The larger mass of dark matter will reveal more distorted galaxies. But this doesn't count as detection of dark matter because what we're observing is the light of the faraway galaxies and not the light emitted by dark matter itself because it doesn't emit any. There should be millions, if not billions, of dark matter particles passing through the Earth every second. And there have been so many experiments set up to try and detect them. There's two main ways to do so. The first way is by looking for the product of the decay or the annihilation of a dark matter particle. This is an indirect detection method of dark matter. There are, for example, regions in space where the density of dark matter is very, very high, for example, at the center of galaxies or colliding clusters of galaxies. And in these regions, we're more likely to see dark matter particles collide with each other, or if they decay, they might emit high energy gamma rays, protons and antiprotons, or high energy neutrinos. From space, we have telescopes like ESA's Integral and NASA's Fermi that are on the lookout for these gamma ray emissions. The second way is by looking for the scattering of dark matter particles when they bounce off other atomic nuclei. And when they do scatter, you expect the nuclei to recoil. This is direct detection of dark matter and it's looking for the low energy recoil of nuclei that have interacted with dark matter particles. These experiments are typically built deep underground to shield them from the contamination of other signals like cosmic rays. There are two main types of these detectors. Cryogenic detectors detect the heat emitted from the recoil and scintillation detectors detect scintillation, basically flashes of light caused by the collision. The DARMA experiments are scintillation detectors, and so far they're the only direct detection experiment that have given any positive results at all. Their results show a dark matter signal that changes with the time of the year. And this is something that you maybe might expect since the density of dark matter the experiment passes through will change as the Earth moves around the Sun. The DARMA experiments have been running since 1995. However, researchers are skeptical of their results because similar experiments cannot reproduce these results and the scientists of the DARMA experiments don't share their raw data. But maybe this year, things will change, the year 2020. There's a new experiment coming up called Lux Zeppelin, which is a seven ton tank of liquid xenon, the chemical that's commonly used in the gas form in UV lamps. The idea is to measure the interactions between any dark matter and ordinary matter. 
And if dark matter particles pass through this chamber, then they should generate bursts of light as they collide with the xenon atoms. Here, xenon is cooled to minus 100 degrees Celsius, and it's stored about 1500 meters below ground in an unused gold mine in South Dakota. This is to shield it from other particles that also bombard the Earth, but not dark matter, which can still easily reach it because it's very weakly interacting, so it pretty much passes through everything. At CERN, the Large Hadron Collider is trying to produce dark matter particles by colliding beams of protons together. But since the detectors won't pick up the dark matter itself, what they're actually looking for is any missing energy or momentum. The Large Hadron Collider has been looking for dark matter since 2008, but they still haven't seen anything. Will this year be the year of dark matter? And who will detect it first? Will it be the experiments deep underground or the high energy telescopes up there in space? Will Luke Zeppelin verify the Dharma experiment results? Only time will tell. Let me know in the comment section below what you think is the best way to detect dark matter. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. I'll be back again same time next week for more space talk. But in the meanwhile, don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.